feels like it's been a while What am I waiting for? Your empty hearted smile I don't care anymore The slow Descend into the madness of our fears. You know I meant to do it better this time, but I'm not really here. You and the extra. Like it's been a while. What am I doing wrong? Tooth of a crocodile. I guess you. Shoot.
how I let it get this far Also there's this girl I met at a bar She burned as bright and as unattainably as some distant star And from within her fragile flesh where I lay my head to rest I could feel her heart hammering in her chest Celestial glow I would follow her I know what else there's to go ooh, 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 ooh,
fought in a war that you're not gonna win but if you knock on my door baby i just might let you in i know she can get real when you stay in one place when you sit there and to be doing okay so lay off man I've had a long day I was afraid you would see through my smile and no I can't to get a little roughed up playing in the lion's mane from the little red lines to the wolves at the door I gave some warning signs that were not so easy to ignore you say it's easy to change but I stay just the same fickle and straight to be doing okay so lay off man I've had a long day yeah I've been doing my best to be doing okay so try to understand I've come a long way Hey, we're here in the Bard Rock studio today and really excited to have Johanna Warren in the studio. Welcome, Johanna. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, for the people that might not know your music yet or not know it as well, uh, I just wanted to start off with where are you from and how'd you get your start in music? I'm from many places. I've moved around a lot and... I have always made music in some capacity or another. Um, my dad played piano when I was a kid, so um, cool. I was always just around music being played, and he would turn me on to good records from a very young age, So, um, and always encouraged us just making music, like there were always little instruments around our house. So I was always just walking around singing and banging on things. And then I started playing flute when I was in fourth grade. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and that's uh, still part of my music making process like I play flute on my records and um, it's kind of the only instrument that I like really have any kind of training in so wow that's really surprising actually that's really cool <laughs> um, have you always been a solo artist or have you worked with other groups I started out as a solo artist and then that turned into a band very quickly I met um a really amazing person who was kind of the first person who ever expressed interest in working with me or like belief in what I was doing. And I looked up to him a lot. He was like this very um, visionary who was really into like weird noise music. So we started this collaboration called Stick Lips. Um, that was, it was my moniker before I met him, but then it turned into a band and we made two records. Um, but he actually got a brain tumor when he was 25 and exited this dimension. So, and he was kind of the glue that held the band together, even though it was like songs that I wrote, I was not the band leader. Like he was always the one like connecting the dots. So when he left, it was just, it just, we tried to keep it together and it just kind of crumbled, but understandable yeah so I understandable struck out on my solo path yeah. um but it might be coming back around actually like I'm still very much in love with my former bandmates and we have unfinished business for sure so 
So you put out uh, a full-length so album, you put out, a uh, a full -length album and a music video this year, um, towards the end of the year. Um, uh, how was that experience, was that and kind of uh, that was that a natural kind of thing that felt good to release them close to the same time, or did it just kind of happen um, that way? It was a lot of things, because I... I released it myself on a record label that I just started called Spirit House, and I had been sitting on the album for about nine months. I finished it in January and was kind of shopping it around, looking for other like pre-established labels that wanted to support it, and um, I was feeling increasingly frustrated and like disempowered by not getting affirmative responses from the people that I was reaching out to. So. I was unsure of how long it was healthy to wait. Like I felt like I had made something that I was really proud of and that deserved to exist in the world and like be supported, but I wasn't getting that from the system and the dudes in suits. So it kind of just like it all happened really fast once I found this place of clarity within myself that like it was not serving me to just keep that thing bottled up because it was it's the first of two albums and I was just sitting on it and I felt like it was becoming sickly and stagnant and just kind of haunting me so I was like I need to get this out like it's it's time so then I just made a lot of things happen really quickly yeah well and I mean as a fan to me it felt like whoa like it was a really powerful time um, to be listening and to be like, whoa, this whole album just came out and a video. It felt to me actually like like a really big deal. So um, so I would say that it was, you know, it was time and it was just ready to happen. And, you know, despite whatever the industry standards are, I think that uh, I think it went just as it needed to. Yeah. So Gemini One is really different from your uh previous two albums in my opinion uh and it feels like you're moving in a different direction production wise and I was wondering if that's something that you're planning on if you particularly made it that way or if that's just the natural way that the songs were written um, um what do you think about that it was largely the result of having access to a real studio for the first time in tracking because the first two albums that uh, me and my co-producer Bella have made together was just in makeshift home studios with just like two not so great microphones and whatever instruments we found on the side of the street you know um so this time around we had access to like a world-class studio with a lot of fun toys to experiment with so um we had we had a good time just experimenting and doing things that I never thought that I could do, like just playing drums and percussion and electric guitar and weird old vintage synths. Um, so it was it was just kind of like us like running around on a playground and trying to not um, weigh the songs down, you know, like always just serving the songs and not going crazy and like losing the essence and the core of the, the heart of like, what the songs want to be. Um, so you've been an independent artist. Yeah. Um, so you've been an independent artist pretty much the whole way, and now you have launched Spirit House, which is an independent label. Can you yes. tell us about Spirit House um, a little bit? It's really exciting to me. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, largely because um, Jonathan, my friend who I was talking about before, who started Stick Lips with me, that was his life mission like he started a record label and he was so passionate about it and had such big plans and really like the motivation was because he saw that like the old system of the industry was crumbling and that awesome independent artists who have a lot to say are not being validated by the people with the big money to invest in people and so he wanted to just create a space for like marginalized voices to be heard um and so when he died he left that to me like he told me like the last time that I saw him that he was leaving me the label and I, I was like at that point I was like 22 and just felt 
completely overwhelmed by that. I was like, why? Why me? Like, I'm not a business person. I don't know what is going on. Um, So it's been kind of this, like, existential baggage that I've been dragging around for years, feeling like, because he's he's been consistently, continually showing up for me as, like, a major guide on the other side and, like, ally who has my back. But every time that I've, like, tuned in with him in the last couple years, there's always, it's, like, just so much love and so much support. And then, like, and, hey, hey. <laughs> P.S., hey. why aren't you doing the thing I told you to do? <laughs> why aren't you doing the thing I told you so to this do? was largely me finally totally. stepping into those shoes. Um, but I I had tried to do it a couple years ago in, a, like, just purely from that place of, like, obligation or like indebtedness to him I was like you wanted me to do this and I don't know how to do it but I'm totally gonna do it but it didn't work because I was just trying to carry out his vision to a T and not it wasn't coming from like an authentic place in me of like wanting to do that but I got to a place where um I had an album that I wanted to put out I felt really good about it nobody wanted to put it out for me and I looked around me and saw that I was just in this web of badass women songwriters who I identify with so much and see so much of myself in Mm -hmm. and identify with their struggle and I was like whoa like there's something happening here like I know what I'm doing is cool what you're doing is super cool like we we all see and appreciate each other and we get it and it's like really frustrating that like we're not getting offered tens of thousands of dollars to do what we're doing but that's where we are so like let's do something about it and like build a house that we want to live in um thank you so much johanna thank you so much i am just so pleased to have you in our studio and you inspire me very much and likewise i'm sure uh everybody listening will be equally inspired thank you so much thank you that's it for us